Hello everybody and welcome back to another Flutter tutorial. So in today's video, what we're going to be doing is setting up Firebase. So all we're going to do is just set up this Firebase so that we can actually use all the authentication, databases, anything that we want from it. This is a little bit of a process, so I decided to dedicate a whole video to doing that, uh, but that's what we're going to be doing. So for anyone that doesn't know what Firebase is, this is kind of Google's like authentication database system. Super easy to use compared to setting up our own database and creating all those kinds of things. Uh, there is obviously a few steps that we need to follow, but we're just going to go through them. So the first thing that we're going to do to actually start setting up Firebase is we need to kind of make a project or an account on the Firebase website. So you just simply go to firebase.google.com. All the links I mentioned here should be in the description. If they're not, leave a comment and I will definitely add them. Uh, but firebase.google.com. And then you're going to simply sign in with the account that you actually want to create this Firebase project under. So your Google account and then simply click go to console. So once you click go to console, you should see a bunch of projects here. Actually, you probably won't see any projects here if you haven't used this before. But for example, I have four different projects. So these are all Firebase projects that I've used before. You can see this one uh, is the one that I was just messing with before this tutorial to make sure everything was working. So the first thing we're going to do here is just simply add a project. So literally just click add project and then it tells you exactly what you need to do. Give it a name. So I'm just going to make this uh, our message app. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's what I'll call it for now and click continue. All right, so now it's going to ask you, oh, do you want analytics for your Firebase project? I usually just say yes, because why not? I mean, say you actually were going to deploy this or you just wanted to see how many reads and writes you're having per second or something like that. I think this is useful, so I just leave it enabled and click continue. Next, it's going to ask you for an account if you have multiple, I believe. For me, I have two. I'm just going to go default account for Firebase. That's probably the one you're going to want to select as well. Uh, and you can make a new account, I believe it says here, automatically create a new property. Don't worry about all that. We could just keep it nice and simple. Just make default account for Firebase, the account you're going to put here. All right, next, we're going to click create project. It's going to take a second. Once this is done, I will be back. All right, so our project is now ready. You can see message app has been created. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Awesome. So here we go. Um, now we are in kind of our dashboard for this project. You can see there's authentication, database, storage, hosting, machine learning, so on and so forth. A ton of stuff here. And there is premium subscriptions for Firebase where you can get uh, you can actually use this in deployment and have like a bunch of servers and all that kind of stuff. I don't know a ton about that. We're not going to need to use that. We're just going to be using all the free features of this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect this to our Android application. So in this tutorial, I'm just going to be showing us how to do this for Android. Android. Uh, if you're doing this on iOS, things are definitely more tricky and you actually need a Mac. So since I know a lot of you guys don't have Mac OS, I decided just to skip doing the iOS stuff because it's going to be tricky and most of you actually won't be able to do it without having a Mac. So anyways, we're just going to click on this Android icon right here. So get started by adding Firebase to your app. So let's go ahead and click that. And now we're going to need to add this information. So let me just boot up VS Code. I'll be back in a second and then I'll show us what we need to put here. OK, so I got my VS code running, but first, before I even go back into that, which is here, let's just have a look at the things that we're being asked for here. So the first thing we need is an Android package name. If you hover over this, it says your package name is generally the application ID and your app level build.gradle file. So we'll be able to find that in just a second. App nickname, we choose that. And then a debug signing certificate SHA1 optional. Now, since we're actually going to be using authentication, we do need to give this to um, our app. So this is not optional for our case. I'm I'm going to show you how we can generate a SHA-1 um, token or hash or whatever this is called uh, in just a second, but that'll be a next step. But we do need to do this, so just make sure you don't re click register app until you've added these three things. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to VS Code and we're going to our uh, project level build.gradle file. So I'm going to click into Android and then there should be a build.gradle file there. We're going to click into that and we're simply going to look for our application ID, which actually might not be in here. Um, one second, I think I can search for it in here. So I'm just going to search for application ID right here in the search bar in VS Code. And we can see in build.gradle, which is inside Android app. OK, so that's going to be inside app. Build.gradle, we should have something that says our application ID. So here we go. Application ID. So we can specify our own unique application ID if we want, or we can simply just use this one. So we're going to use this one, this com.example.hello uh, world. That's going to be our app ID. So we're just going to grab that and we're going to put that back inside up here. Awesome. So now we have that. Now we can give this a nickname. I'm just going to call this message app. 
even though nothing in our app is really related to messaging, I've just been calling it message app the whole time. So let's go with that. And now we need the debug signing certificate. So this is actually a few steps. To do this, we need Java installed on our computer. So if you don't have Java, there'll be a link in the description to install it. In fact, let me just go to that link and show you what I mean. So let's go here. Uh, this is the development kit for Java. So if you download this, it's going to come with a tool that we need to use. Uh, but you can scroll down here, see Linux, Mac, Windows, so on and so forth, and just download the appropriate one. Run through the installer, should be pretty quick, and that will download Java on your machine. Once you have that, you can follow with the next step that I'm going to do now. So I'm going to close that. And now what we need to do is generate an SH1 hash. So if we hover over this, says, see this page for information on using key tool to get the SH1 hash of your signing certificate. So this is uh, how your app is actually going to authenticate with Google. We need like a specific hash. And we can use this thing called key tool, which comes with Java to generate that. So I will leave this link in the description as well, although I'm going to be going through all of the steps here. Essentially, we just need to run this key tool command in our command prompt, and this is going to generate a hash for us that we can use and store a key store file somewhere on our computer. You don't really have to understand how all of this works, but essentially just imagine that our app needs some way to actually authenticate itself with the Google servers. So since we're just doing this in kind of a debug mode right now, we're not actually doing anything in production, things will be a bit easier for us. Uh, but you have to imagine, right, that someone else could pretend to be our app and steal people's passwords, emails, whatever it might be. Uh, so we need some kind of hash to authenticate ourselves. That could be a poor explanation, but you guys can read through here. It says certain Google Play services, such as Google Sign In and App Invites, require you to provide a SHA-1 of your signing certificate so we can create an OAuth to clients and API key for your app. So that's pretty much what we're doing. Okay, so assuming that you downloaded Java, now we need to find Java on our computer uh, and we need to add it to our system path so that we can actually use key tool. So Java is typically installed in your C drive. So I'm going to go to this PC. You can see I have a bunch of hard drives here, but most of you will probably just have a C drive. Uh, if you change the location of it, obviously go to that location, but we're just looking for our program files inside of C drive. So C drive program files, and then we're going to look for Java. So if I scroll down here, I can see Java. I can see it was modified uh, actually today at 107 p.m. when I downloaded Java earlier. And then inside of here, we might have two things or we might just have one. Doesn't matter which one you have. Both of these are going to have the tool that we need. Um, I recently installed the JDK, but I'm actually going to use the JRE. Doesn't matter again which one of these two folders that you have. You might even have more than these, but click into one of them, whichever one. I'm just going to go with JRE and then click into bin. Now inside of bin, if you scroll down, you should see an executable called key tool. If you don't see that, go into one of the other folders that was inside of your Java folder and find inside of the bin something that says key tool. This is the tool that we're going to need to use to actually generate this, um, this SHA-1 token that we need. So I'm actually just going to copy this path right here. So from C drive, program files, Java, JRE, and then bin. So that's the path we want to copy. Um, the way that I'm doing that right is just by clicking here and clicking control C to copy that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type environment variable in my Windows search bar at the bottom left hand corner. What we're going to do now is actually add this path to our system path. You might recall we did this in video one so that now we can actually access key tool from the command line and any of the Java stuff that we want. So we're going to click edit environment variables. Next, we're going to click on path. So you guys might not be brought to this page. Uh, you might be brought to something that looks like this and then just simply click environment variables and then it should pop up that window. Regardless, we just want to get to modify our environment variables, which is this page right here. We're going to click on path. We're going to click on edit and then we're going to click on new and we're going to add that path in. So you can see I already have the path above because I've already added that one, but that's what you need to do. Simply add the path to wherever this key tool is. In this case, it's obviously just the bin within our program files on our C drive uh, in the Java folder. Great. So we're going to close that up now. Now we have that added to our path. We can actually close our Windows Explorer. And now if we open our command prompt and we type key tool, like that, it should actually pop up. So there we go. We can see key tool is popping up uh, and it's giving us these are the commands that we have. So we're simply going to copy the command that they have right here. For some reason, I couldn't get this to work before, but I'm just going to copy this one. Uh, and this tells you exactly what you need to do. So literally, you're just going to type this in. This is going to make a key store file. 
this where it says user profile is going to automatically fill in with your user profile, which is an environment variable. Uh, and it will make this key store file that we can then reference. And when we're going to grab this key from the output. So that might seem confusing, but simply right click if you want to paste. And I guess I didn't copy it properly. Let's see. Copy and back in here. Right click and ah, so this is keeps happening. Okay, so we're actually going to have to type this out because they did this weird thing with this backslash that I don't like, or we need to go to like a notepad. I'm going to paste this in here and then get rid of this slash and just put this all in one line. Okay, so this I'll leave this command in the description so you guys can just copy it if you want, but essentially just get rid of that little slash and the new line because that's going to mess it up when we paste it in the terminal and just make it all one line. So I've got that on all one line now. I'm just going to copy that over, delete everything here that I've filled in accidentally, and then right click and enter key store password. So the default password for this is going to be Android. So just type in Android. You won't see anything showing up in the, this password field. That's fine. Once you type Android, hit enter. And assuming you did everything correctly, all of this stuff should be popping up. Now I want to note, I probably shouldn't be showing you this. Um, if this was like a production app, you, I probably don't want to be giving you away uh, my key, but it's fine because this is just a YouTube tutorial. I don't really care if you guys hack into my app uh, and I don't know if you can or not, but I just want to say, be careful with these keys because I feel like they're probably important and you don't want to lose them <laughs> or not lose them, but give them to people that shouldn't know them. So regardless, once that happens, you're going to see a bunch of output popping up here. It's going to look like gibberish. We're just going to look for SHA-1 and we're going to copy whatever's after the colon. So all these little colonated things here, so like CE92, blah, 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 whatever it is, just copy that. And then I'm just going to throw that in this notepad file for right now, but we're going to use that in just a second. All right, so now we have that. I can close my uh, key tool thing here. I'm actually going to close this web page as well, or I'll leave it open so I remember to add it to the description. But now if we go to debug signing certificate, we can simply paste in that SHA-1 code that we copied from the command prompt. So again, you type in uh, that command, which will be in the description, that key tool command, and then you can grab SHA-1 and put it here. Next, we're going to click register app. Uh, an unexpected error has occurred. OAuth client exists in a different project for package name. Uh, okay, so this is because I've already added an app using this. So I'm just going to delete that other app and then I'll be back in one second and, and this should work. Okay, so I just deleted the other app. Now I'm pressing register app. We can see things are working now. You won't have that problem. That was just because I was testing before and well, that key we already used. Now you're going to see we have to download this config file. So we're going to download this Google services.json. I already had one downloaded, so of course mine goes with the one. I'm going to have to change that name. Uh, but regardless, just download that file. It will go to your downloads. And then this is telling us where we need to put it. So this is saying if you're in Android Studio, but we can obviously do this in VS Code, we're going to go into our Android app, and then we're going to put that inside of the root directory, our Google services.json. This is just a file that gives uh, like some configuration information, and we're going to link to that in a second from some of our other files. So let's go into VS Code now. I'm going to go to my downloads. You can see I have two Google services. I'm just going to delete this old one that I don't need. And then I'm simply going to rename this one, actually the proper name and grab it. And I'm going to take it and bring it inside of Android app. So inside of this app folder, I'm going to grab this right here and throw that in. So it should be right beside build.gradle. Again, not inside of the source folder, just inside of the app folder. OK, now that we've done that, we're actually going to link to this Google services.json file. So the way that we do that is we actually just need to modify our build.gradle. So within this Android app, so right here, we should see that there's this build.gradle file. So not inside of the app folder, sorry, there's multiple build.gradle files. That's why I'm specifying uh, just inside of this root Android, this build.gradle file right here. We're going to click on that and we're going to modify some of the dependencies here to add Firebase as a dependency. So this is kind of where you go when you want to just change things, add dependencies, add packages. Uh, you add them inside of the Gradle file, at least for an Android application. So what we're going to need to do, first of all, is make sure that inside of repositories, so in line three to line six, your file should look the same as mine. You have Google. And then same thing here inside of all projects, make sure you have Google. Um, that might not be there. If it's not, just simply add it where I have it uh, and make your file kind of look like mine. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go into dependencies, which is right here. And we're simply going to add this line that I'm just going to copy and paste in from my other screen. So simply add class path, and then you're going to do single quotation mark com.google.gms 
colon, oops, uh, Google hyphen services colon 4.3.2. Obviously, that's the version. So this is just saying, hey, we need this dependency. Uh, and you know, this is the link to the dependency, download it for us, blah, blah, blah. All right. So now that we have that, we're going to go into all projects. Google is there. Okay. And that is all we need to do for this file. So as soon as we add this class path dependency, that's good. Simply save the file make sure you save that. And now what we're going to do is go into our other build.gradle file and modify that one. So inside of the app folder now, before we were outside in the Android, we're going to go inside app, we're going to go build.gradle, and now we're going to modify this one. So there's a few things to change here. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab this line here that I'm just going to copy and paste in. It's going to say apply plugin colon and then com.google.gms google hyphen services. So again, I will try to remember to add this to the description. Please remind me or yeah, please remind me if I forget, uh, but add this to the top. So apply plugin and then we're going to add a few other things as well. Okay. So once we've added this plugin now, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to dependencies, which is where this implementation is. And we're simply just going to add one more implementation inside of here. So inside dependencies, I will add implementation com.google.firebase colon Firebase hyphen analytics colon 17.2.0. So a lot of stuff here, but inside of dependencies, we need to add that. And that's going to tell us again, hey, we're using Firebase. We need this as a dependency. And I think if I'm just looking at my other screen here, that that is all we need. Uh, so go ahead and save that. And now what we're going to do is sync and refresh these Gradle files. So, oh, that's great. 127 problems. <laughs> Perfect. That's nice. Uh, we can fix that in just a second. But what I'm going to do is go into my terminal, sorry, down here. You can also just have a command prompt. That's totally fine. And what we're going to do is we're simply going to refresh these Gradle dependencies. So we need to actually change directory from down here into this Android folder here. So we're going to CD into Android like that. Now that we're inside of Android, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this command in here, which is dot slash Gradle W hyphen hyphen refresh dependencies. OK, so I don't know what was going wrong there. I'm having all kinds of problems today, uh, just kind of finicky stuff. But it seems like it's working now. Uh, so it seems like it's running the app. Hopefully that is working. And I'm going to assume that once this is installed, uh, that this will actually work and we will connect. So we'll give it a second and make sure that runs, but I'll be back in a sec once this is telling me that, hey, you know, everything is successful. All right. So I just refreshed the dependencies one more time. I don't know if it worked properly the first time, but just Gradle W hyphen hyphen refresh dependencies within the Android folder. And now if we go over here, we can see congratulations, you successfully added Firebase to your app. So we can continue to the console now. We can say one app is connected here. I can actually have a look at that app and continue some setup if we want. So anyways, that has actually been this video. All I wanted to get us to do was set this up successfully. I know you guys could follow along with the instructions, uh, but there was some finicky stuff. Like for example, this command, I had to find that and to not tell me to do that within VS Code. Um, so just stuff like that. Figured I might be able to help you guys out with the installation process. So if that was helpful for you, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video. Where we'll actually be setting up proper authentication for our Firebase application. Thank you.